All right, welcome back to another fly tying video. Uh, this is my vise, and as you can see, I've got a hook in it, and it's got a little bitty bead on it. It is a black glass bead. I wish I knew more information about what size it was, but I don't because it was purchased at a craft store. Yeah, this is the same type of bead that you would use on like, I don't know, bracelets and necklaces and that kind of thing. We found in places like Walmart, Hobby Lobby, stuff like that. But anyway, that's a tiny little glass bead and I've got it on a Timkyo Caddis and Shrimp hook. That's a size 18. That's what I'm going to start with. And, uh... The fly that I'm going to tie with it is going to be this little generic type midge pattern that I've been playing around with all morning. And uh, I'm pretty happy with what I got, so I figured I'd make a little video of it. <coughs> Anyways, I've just started the thread on there, and I'm going to give that a little twist to kind of bring it in neutral. So I'll ever taking all the twists out of the thread there. And then I'm not really going to build up anything behind the bead just yet. Actually, I'm not even going to wrap down yet. I'm going to leave that right there where it's at. I'm just going to start the thread and keep that where it's going next. I'm going to take some of this uh, ultra wire. Wow, that's big. All right, there we go. Take some of that ultra wire there. There you go. It's, you can see that it's black and it's size SM, which stands for small. Go figure. And anyway, I'm just going to... See if I can show you that. I'm just going to undo it like so. I'm going to take one wrap off and then another wrap off. And then I'm going to come back and secure it just like I did before on that little stopper. So boom, we get that. I've got my handy needle nose pliers. Every fly tire should have a pair of needle nose pliers. It'll cut that wire right off. And then the next one I'm going to do, I'm going to grab another color. And this is silver, same ultra wire, same size SM or small. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to get the same length of wire off of it. Once again, with my handy needle nose pliers, I'm just going to move that in as close as I can get it to the edge and just break it off. You can see that the wire is pinched in the needle nose pliers, so you can hold on to it. Now, here comes the fun, somewhat annoying part of the fly, but I promise this is the hardest part of it. What you're going to do now is you're going to have your two pieces of wire and you're going to set them up to where the black wire right there, put that in view. See, there we go. The black wire is on top of the silver wire. And you want to keep that kind of the same, the two of those the same length. I know I'm getting kind of fingery here. Let me see if I can get them shortened up to about the same length. Okay, now it looks like the black's a little bit longer, so we'll shorten that little black one up. If I can grab a hold of it. There we go. Boom. Perfect. And like I was saying, you want to keep the black wire on top, the silver wire on bottom. Now, this is just the way I like to tie it, because when you wrap it, you get a body that's more predominantly black than silver, but... You can do this to suit your needs. If you want to do it the other way, feel free to do so. If you want to change up the colors, feel free to do so. This is fly tying, man. There's no rules. We're just having fun. So then, as I've tied that in, I'm just going to wrap it all the way down here to about right there. What would be the end of the shank for this kind of fly? It's a little bit unique there. And I'm just going to wind it up halfway. And as you can see, my thread has developed a little bit of twist in it. And I'm really wanting a smooth underbody here so that wire lays real nice and even on the uh, hook shank. So I'm just going to give that a little spin until I see all that little twist come out. Yep, right like that looks good. 
Now I'm just going to continue wrapping. Nice, smooth underbody for all that lead wire. And I'm going to stop it right behind the bead, just like that. Now here's another little deal. I'm going to get some more of that twist out of there. There we go. We're back to neutral. I'm just going to throw a real quick half hitch in that. Two for good measure, right? If it's good for one, it's good for another one. Just like that. Okay, so now we're half hitched up. I'm going to put that in my bobbin cradle over here. And now I'm just going to take my lead wire and where I have my black wire tied on top. Now I'm just going to take and start twisting. <coughs> start twisting my wire around the hook shank like so i laid that first piece of black wire down now comes the silver and black together you can see how we're getting nice uniform wraps now you can kind of see what i did there on that last wrap i kind of caught the uh the point of the hook just make sure you come out above the hook point just like that so you don't catch it and create gaps between the silver and black wire keeps it nice and tight just like that and you can see we're just going to continue the wrapping and the good thing about this is the wire as you hold it taut and wrap the wire naturally finds the next spot where it's supposed to fall on the hook shank if that makes sense right it just you're kind of keeping it tight enough and sort of angle back a little bit to where it's following the previous wrap so that the next wrap lays right in front of it. And then you get a nice little pretty body like that. Now I'm up here by the bead, which is my stopping point. So I'm just going to hold those off to the side like I got them there. I'm going to retrieve my thread from the cradle. And I'm just going to get one real quick loop around that now I'm still all I did there was switch hands I still didn't let go of the wire I just swapped hands so I can kind of move my my bobbin cradle down and out of the way and I'm going to do another wrap right on top followed by guess what another wrap right on top now next I'm going to pull the wire back a little bit and I'm going to do two wraps right in front of it and you can see I got my tags there. Now, some of y'all out here in, in YouTube land probably already know this trick. Some of you may not, but the first thought might be just cut that guy right off. Well, don't. You don't have to cut it. It's wire. It's got this unique thing where it's bendable. And if you just keep working that back and forth, you can work it back and forth and it'll break off. Or you can do the helicopter method like that. And what that's doing is is that's breaking the wire off right even with the thread you see that it's right even with the thread you don't have any points sticking up that you have to tie down that's nothing but thread right on top now i'm just going to finish that off just a little bit make sure that that bead's locked off in place and then i'm going to come back maybe covering the last one or two uh wraps of my body there just a little bit and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab me a piece of uh, peacock curl this is the peacock curl now it doesn't have to be you want to kind of about really you want it a little less buggy than what this one is even I mean yeah that looks compared to the fly there that looks really huge doesn't it so I'm just gonna trim find my trusty scissors that aren't being there they are get my trusty scissors here and i'm just going to lop off maybe about an inch of that just to get some of that bigger bulk out of the way and you see now we got some some of the fibers there that are more more appropriately sized for this hook and i'm just going to tie that in one two three wraps there or so and i'm advanced back to the front of the bead there and i'm going to get one wrap two wraps Three wraps. I don't know why I'm counting them because really what you're doing here is just going back up to the bead. And when you get to the butt or the back side of that bead, you want to take one wrap 
over the thread like I've got here. So see like where my thread was stopped, I did one more additional wrap in front of the thread. So now that when I bring the thread up, I'm in behind it. Just like that. And then one in behind it, one in front of it. And now that dude's tied off pretty good right there. So now I'm going to give it a little tilt so I can see where that peacock curl is. And I'm just going to give it a quick trim off nice and flush. And now we're pretty much done with this bad boy. All we got to do now is just get a little whip finish going on here. You can do it with your hands or with a tool. On the smaller flies, I like using the tool. Two, three, four, and five. Five is my favorite number. You may have a different favorite number. Hey, like I said, this is fly tying. There are no rules. Only imagination. I'm going to trim that thread off. And there you have it. There's a completed generic wire body midge type. Some people might call this a, a brassy. It's a little bit different than a brassy. A brassy uses uh, full copper wire the length of the entire body. Here I've kind of just mixed up the colors. It's more closer to a other type of pattern called a zebra midge, but it's a little bit more durable because you're using uh, wire to cover up your thread wraps instead of having black thread wraps with silver wire over the top of them. And uh, it's also going to be beneficial because it adds you a little bit more weight um, to the fly because you've used two types of lead wire and you also, or excuse me, two types of ultra wire. And you've essentially wrapped it for the full length of the body. Anyway, that's this little midge pattern. Thanks for watching. Come back.